Now today we're talking about seven of the worst kibbles you could possibly feed your pit bull and we're starting right now, so keep watching. What's up, I'm Ruben. If you're new to the channel, this channel is all about the bull breeds, killing the bad stereotypes and becoming better owners. Now if you're a loyal watcher to the channel, you will see in some of my past videos, I explained to you why kibble is bad. And let me give you a little bit of a quick rundown why I think kibbles are bad, okay? So over time, if you feed your dog cheap kibbles, you're gonna end up having some health problems with your dog. They could develop cancer, they could become obese. A lot of these kibbles have very cheap ingredients so it can make it more affordable to the public. But overall, they're just giving you useless calories with no nutritional content inside of those calories. And I could go on forever on why kibbles are bad, but your dog will develop health problems if you do feed your dog these kibbles I'm about to tell you about right now. Now, this video is not to bash these companies. I really, you know, I hate to put them on blast like this, but I got to bring this information to you guys, you know, because we're all about becoming better owners and taking care of the best possible way we could take care of our dogs. So let's get right into the list of kibbles that are bad for your dogs. Now the first kibble on my list is Beneful by Purina. It does contain chicken as a protein source, but it's also full of soy and wheat. And these ingredients could develop serious digestive and health issues over time. And they do have some questionable byproducts such as chicken byproduct in their kibble. So that's why I put this as number one on the list. Number two on the list is kibbles and bits. Now the number one ingredient on this is corn. That's one thing that pops out to me. There's also beef and bone meal, soybean meal, wheat and flour, but I did notice that this kibble and bits is missing natural meats inside of their ingredients. So that's the reason why I say stay away from this brand. And their ingredients also has numerous synthetic dyes, so that's another reason why I say stay away from this. Number three on the list is I am so good. While chicken is the main source of protein for IMs, it also contains chicken byproduct milk. It also includes cornmeal and whole grain sorghum. Another ingredient that I saw on this is they use dried beet pulp. This ingredient is used as a sugar filler and it can also make your dog gain some weight. Number four on the list is Purina dog chow. The main ingredient in the dog chow is grain corn. There's also some poultry byproduct meal that we do not want in there. Meat and bone meal, whole grain meat, and soybean meal. And I did notice this kibble does use four different dyes to maintain the color for their kibble. They use a lot of corn, a lot of grains, and a lot of dyes. And overall, this is not good for puppies or adult dogs. Number five on the list, Munster Natural Adult Dog Food. Now the dog food formula is natural, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily good. They use their protein as a chicken byproduct meal instead of a wholesome chicken. It also contains sugary beet pulp and citric acid. Overall, this is not good. This could cause digestive problems and a lot more health issues down the road. Number six on the list is Olroy by Walmart. Now this doesn't have any kind of protein sources. Instead, they use ground corn, soybean meal, ground wheat, and meat meal. Corn is also listed as the first ingredient, so it has the highest concentration inside of this kibble. Citric acid is also used as a preservative, so this could cause some dental issues with your dog, some digestive issues, and overall health problems. Number seven on the list, Pedigree Adult Complete Nutrition Dried Dog Food. Now, the closest thing they have to protein is chicken byproduct. Now, byproduct isn't great. It could come from unwanted leftovers from a variety of sources. Ground whole corn and corn gluten meal are also used in this kibble. And there's also a variety of synthetic colors utilized in this kibble, which overall makes it unhealthy for your dog. Now, again, I'm not trying to bash these companies, but there's a lot of ingredients inside here that I don't think are fit for dogs that could cause health problems over time, even when you're in the later stages of your dog's life. When they hit about like 10 years old, maybe even sooner, you're going to see a lot of the health decline because of the food choices that we make right now with poor kibbles. That's the reason why I want to bring this to you. Now, if you're still here, keep watching. I'm going to explain to you what byproduct means. And I want you guys to understand why I think byproduct is not something you want to aim for for your protein sources in these dogs' food. I'm going to blow your mind if you never heard about it before. Animal byproducts are what's left of a slaughtered animal after the parts intended for human consumption have been removed. This meat processing scrap is considered inevitable by many cultures and includes waste material like the feet, backs, livers, lungs, heads, the brains, the spleen, frames, 
kidneys, stomachs, intestines, and undeveloped eggs. But there are exceptions. Glibits such as livers, hearts, gizzards, and necks, as well as other organs can still be sold as edible meats as they are, or used to make hot dogs, bologna, and sausage. Now this is unfit for human consumption, but is it okay for dog food? However, what makes some byproducts edible and others not isn't just a matter of what they are, but how they're handled after slaughter. For example, giblets not refrigerated immediately after slaughter, but stored for up to 24 hours in a hot offal trailer cannot be sold for human consumption. Yet they can still be legally used for making pet food. Dead on arrival animals or other condemned parts that have been declared inevitable, unfit for human consumption can still be used for making pet food. And according to FDA policy, they don't care what goes into the dog food. According to the FDA, no regulatory action will be considered for the animal feed ingredients resulting from the ordinary rendering process of industry, including those using animals which have died otherwise than by slaughter, provided they are not otherwise in the violation of the law. So overall, the FDA has made it legal to include almost anything in your dog food as long as it's resembled an animal at some point in its past. This means that anything derived from an animal that is dead, diseased, dying, or disabled is fair game for your dog food. The chicken byproduct, the beef byproduct, and all that is what this is. It could be any part of an animal, no matter if it's roadkill, no matter if it's been slaughtered in a slaughterhouse and it's been hanging out or unfit for human consumption. They still let it be legal to be used as dog food, and these dog companies put it inside the kibble and label it as byproduct. And all those seven lists of kibbles that I've shown you just now, basically all of them have byproduct, all right? And you know what blows my mind is some of them don't even use the byproduct. They just use straight up just corn and filler and useless ingredients, useless calories inside those kibbles. So that's the reason why I wanted to bring it to you. Now that I gave you the seven worst kibbles, I'm gonna give you the five best kibbles that you could feed your dog. I have made another video about it and I want you to check it out. I did some research on these companies. I'll put a link in the description below or there'll be a video at the end where you could go and click on that. If you like this video, smash that like button below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, you get all my videos. I will see you guys on the next one, I'm out.